Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to Wrestling Jeopardy. My name is Kevin J. Callis. Yep. And it's time once again to play the game. So let's go to the board and check out the categories you'll be quizzed on, starting with hairiest wrestlers, followed by mullets rock, and then mohawks rule, afrotastic, and last but certainly not least for my follically challenged friends out there, bald is beautiful. Ah! And if this is your first time playing, thanks for stopping by. And if you're a veteran of Wrestling Jeopardy, well, welcome back. Here are the not so extreme rules on your screen right now so you understand exactly how to play this interactive play along trivia competition where you're the contestant. I'm gonna go out there today and manhandle these waves just like I'm gonna manhandle you. All right, so here we go. Let's kick things off with the 200 point round of Wrestling Jeopardy, the easiest round. One of the most recognizable faces of the 1980s wrestling boom, this animal had so much body hair that he might as well have been wearing a Sasquatch suit. And that would be the one and only George the Animal Steel. Which brings us to Mullet's Rock for 200. Before he lied, cheated, and stole in a crew cut, this late wrestler was Latino heat in a mullet. The answer we're looking for here is Eddie Guerrero. Hey, not those. What can I say? <laughs> Moving on to Mohawk's rule for two. There ain't nothing nasty about the Mohawk mullets of these former AWA, WCW, and WWF Tag Team Champions. And the correct answer here, Brian Knobs and Jerry Sags, who are the nasty boys? We're on to Afrotastic for 200. This brash second generation superstar made his Afrotastic debut in October 2004 when he beat John Cena for the United States Championship on SmackDown. One of the coolest debuts in WWE history. The correct answer here is Carlito Caribbean Cool. And let's finish up the 200 point round with Bald is Beautiful. The special stipulation for the CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio match at WWE Over the Limit 2010 stated that Rey would join this faction if Punk won and that Punk would lose his hair otherwise. And that would be the Straight Edge Society. Here comes Harriest Wrestlers now for 400. The hairiest wrestler of all time would have to be Terrible Ted, because Ted was this type of animal species. Terrible Ted was a black bear, and I'll give you extra credit if you specifically said he was a Canadian American black bear, which doesn't really make any sense to me. You're either one or the other. Why don't they just say he's a North American black bear? We're on to Mullet's Rock for 400. Sadly, the tandem of mullets known as the Rockers infamously broke up in 1991. Ironically enough, on the set of this WWF talk show hosted by Brutus, the effin' barber beefcake. Hey, yeah. And that famous incident is depicted on my shirt. Thank you, homage. The correct answer here is the barbershop. Oh Moving on to Mohawk's rule for 400. Terry Taylor fully embraced this WWF gimmick by dyeing a tuft of his hair red and spiking it straight up to look like the animal he'd stolen his name from. How could anybody forget about the Red Rooster? It'll be a great day in the barnyard and everybody will be going, arr, 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 arr. 
And that brings us to Afrotastic for four. Frightening audiences by speaking in their ancient tongue and consuming raw fish. This Afrotastic tag team are OG tribal chiefs of the bloodline. And the correct answer, Afa and Sika, who are the Wild Samoans. And we're on to the final clue of the 400 point round. Bald is beautiful, the WWE Women's Championship match at WrestleMania 20 between Victoria and this wrestler remains the only instance of a female superstar losing her hair, losing her hair on a WWE pay-per-view. And that would be Molly Holly. All right, 10 questions down, 15 to go, plus Final Jeopardy, and a daily double is floating around out there. Let's kick off the 600-point round with hairiest wrestlers. In late 2002, when Prince Albert renamed himself This and debuted new wrestling gear, fans often chanted, shave your back at him, due to his hairy torso. And the correct answer here, who is A-Train? <laughs> Brings us to Mullet's Rock for 600. This Native American superstar is most remembered for his war dance and near two-year undefeated streak. But I'd like to call attention to his memorable mullet. Who is Tatanka or Tatanka Buffalo or Chris Chavez? Moving on to Mohawks for six. In his final WWE match, this Mohawked warrior defeated Paul Burchill on the May 6th, 2006 episode of Velocity. RIP to the late great road warrior animal. We're on to Afrotastic for six. This dancing Dominican wasn't quite an Afrotastic ass kicker but he never met a conga line he didn't enjoy leading. With one of the most underrated WWE theme songs, in my personal opinion, the correct answer here is No Way Jose. And we're finishing up the 600 point round. Bald is beautiful. This former wrestling executive has lost his luscious locks in not one, not two, but three different promotions. And that would be none other than Easy E himself, Eric Bischoff. Look at this dude. <laughs> now, if you're having as much fun as I am, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click on the ringy dingy bell notification icon so you always get notified whenever we come out with a brand new episode of Wrestling Jeopardy, which is every weekend, as long as I can keep it up. That's what she said. And we're on to the 800 point round with the clue from Harriest Wrestlers. The rough and tough combination of Bobby Jagger and this Harry Furball form the team of the Kansas Jayhawks. I've always thought this dude was the hairiest wrestler in wrestling. The correct answer here is Dirty Dutch Mantel. Brings us to Mullets for eight. From his days with Demolition to his solo career, this wrestler was able to make his mullet look both manly and as cool as a Hawaiian breeze. Shaka, brah. The correct answer, who is Crush? Pineapple head. Moving on to Mohawk's rule for 800. Ooh, yeah, here we go. The Daily Double has been found. Think about how much you know about wrestling Mohawks and place your wager right now. Right, and this week's Daily Double Clue from Mohawk's Rule. On October 4th, 1987, 
This mohawked monster won what was technically the first ever Royal Rumble at a house show in St. Louis, Missouri. Now this was a test run of the Royal Rumble that would take place and debut in January of 1998. This Rumble only consisted of 12 superstars, but the winner from Chicago, Illinois, the master of the 747 Splash, who is the One Man Gang. And we're on to Afrotastic for eight. Naomi made her Afrotastic return at the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble match lasting over 22 minutes and eliminating this many superstars. This might be a trick question, but the answer is a big fat goose egg, zero. And let's finish up the 800 point round. Bald, it's beautiful. After Kurt Angle defeated Edge during their first pay-per-view match at WWE Backlash 2002, a rematch was set up at this pay-per-view with a hair versus hair stipulation. And the answer we're looking for, it's not the current WWE faction. The pay-per-view was called Judgment Day. Oh! Oh my God! <laughs> and now it's time we've reached the most difficult round in wrestling jeopardy the thousand point round the steel cage begins to lower the ominous music begins to play time to get your thinking caps on with these final five clues before final jeopardy kicking it off with hairiest wrestlers this second generation woolly wrestler was part of the puerto rican stable los Boricuas, alongside jesus castillo jose estrada and Savio Vega. Who is Miguel Perez Jr.? He is a hairy bastard. Brings us to Mullet's Rock for a thousand. In June 2001, this wrestler made his WWE debut sans mullet, but still defeated Rhino for the hardcore title making him the first WCW superstar to win a championship in WWE. I know he didn't have a mullet at the time, but he had the greatest, most glorious Kentucky waterfall I've ever seen. The correct answer here, who is Mike Awesome? A WCW yeah! competitor yeah! has just won the WWF hardcore title. Moving on to the final clue, of Mohawk's rule, Kevin Nash briefly rocked an orange Mohawk in early 1990s WCW while wrestling as Steel, one half of the Master Blasters, with the late Al Green, who was called this. Nash's first tag team partner was some dude named Iron. He wrestled for about a month and then Al Green replaced him and he was called Master Blaster Blade. We're on to Afrotastic for a thousand. In mid-2008, this Afrotastic Atlas made his main roster debut on the ECW brand, defeating Armando Estrada and establishing himself as the Latin Assassin. This dude is probably the most forgotten wrestler of the 2000s in WWE, the correct answer is Ricky Ortiz. Hoo, 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 hoo. And let's finish up the regular Jeopardy round. The final clue from Bald is Beautiful. The biggest little rivalry in WWE history kicked off the 2014 Payback pay-per-view when Hornswoggle tangled with this wrestler in an ultra-rare mask versus hair mask. Oh, the WWE PG era, such fun. The answer here is El Torito. This is the oh ugliest thing God. I've ever seen. Oh, oh no. Hey, congratulations, you did it. You made it through 25 clues. Hopefully you didn't get any uh, gray hairs sprouting from your temples. But right now, 
things get a little bit more difficult. It's Final Jeopardy time. Yo, Jimmy, hit me with that Final Jeopardy clue. Musical gimmicks. Since the days of the wrestling beetle George Ringo, certain gimmicks have been inspired by musical trends that either shake, rattle, and roll, or hardly rock at all. All right, so think about wrestling musical gimmicks and place your Final Jeopardy wager right now. All right, time's up. Here comes the Final Jeopardy clue for this episode. Portrayed as a drifter who often used music to mock his opponents or fans in attendance, Elias joined the WWE main roster in 2017 and in the process dropped this last name. Good luck. Portrayed as a drifter who often used music to mock his opponents or fans in attendance, Elias joined the WWE main roster in 2017 and in the process dropped this last name. Unfortunately for Elias or Ezekiel or Elijah, which is what he's going by now on the independent circuit, he wasn't quite a Goliath in the WWE. However, the last name that he dropped when he moved from NXT to the main roster was Samson. And that does it for another episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. If you like what you saw, please give this video a massive thumbs up and consider subscribing. My name is Kevin J. Callis, and I'll see you next time.